So in the last couple of years, I really started to get into Formula One. And although the breakneck speeds, exotic locations and high tech cars drew me in, one thing always stood out to me, the way it's filmed. Between the swooping helicopter shots, immersive onboard angles, and the scores of other cameras around the track, it makes F1 not only a racing spectacle, but a technical masterpiece. Okay, before we get started, I just wanna say, if you've seen my channel before and are confused why I'm posting a Formula One video, it's because I want this channel to reflect what I'm actually interested in. And uh, right now that happens to be Formula One. And for anyone here just for F1, if the video does well and it gets a good, uh, good reception, I can definitely do more. Anyways, in this video, we're first gonna talk about the different types of cameras and how they're used to film the race. Then we will touch on microphones and logistics. And finally, we'll break down the television production and the army of people it takes to compile all 126 different camera angles into a seamless live broadcast. One quick thing to add is that some of the information in this video might be slightly outdated or a little off, but I did the best I could finding reliable up-to-date sources. Um, but all of the sources I used will be listed in the description below. Helicopter. Okay, first we're gonna break down probably the most expensive camera on the track, the helicopter. Whether it's getting establishing shots of the race location or tracking the action from above, you can be sure the footage is gonna be dynamic and immersive. Because the helicopter is constantly moving, Formula One uses an advanced camera stabilizer to smooth out any bumps. The camera is then connected to a control panel, which a camera operator can use while the pilot flies the helicopter. The pair work as a team to get shots, constantly communicating where the helicopter needs to be and what the shot type is. Back in the early 90s, when helicopters were first introduced to the sport, they would just simply hover in the air and get a static angle. Now the helicopter is constantly capturing long, complex shots of the race that really give the audience context as to what's going on. Onboard cameras. Onboard cameras provide some of the most exciting footage of the race. They allow the viewer to get right into the action and are often better at depicting the insane speeds of the cars than the trackside cameras. F1 only started routinely using onboard cameras in 1989. In the technical regulations, it states that every car must have five onboard cameras. Two of these cameras are located in the T-shaped box on top of the car with one facing forwards and the other facing backwards. The remaining three cameras are placed on the nose and the chassis. Amazingly, the total weight of these cameras is less than four pounds. One quick note to add is that F1 is currently experimenting with putting 360 cameras on the cars, but currently they're only using the footage for social media purposes and not actually live race footage. Cable cam. The final moving camera on the track is the cable cam. Located between the pit lane and the finishing straight, the cable cam is a camera attached to a set of wires that can move at over 130 kilometers per hour to capture the race. It's great for tracking cars as they enter or leave the pits, or providing a dynamic camera angle of the cars as they rocket down the straight. The system they use is called the CamCat, and it's the same cable cam system used at the Olympics and in blockbuster movies. Trackside cameras. The trackside cameras are the bread and butter of the Formula One race coverage. They are essential for allowing the viewer to track the action and always staying oriented as to which car is where. Without trackside cameras, it would almost be impossible to follow the race, especially when there's multiple things happening at any given time. There's usually about 25 of these cameras placed around the track, but that number can vary based on the circuit. F1 uses Grass Valley cameras, which are able to capture high quality video that can be sent directly to the broadcast center. They pair these cameras with Canon broadcast lenses, some of which are able to zoom from nine millimeters all the way in to 810 millimeters. That is a 90 times zoom. These lenses can cost up to $250,000 each. I will not be getting one anytime soon. This camera setup is then mounted on a Vinton tripod head, which is very robust and smooth and is essential for capturing lightning quick whip pans as the cars zoom by. Okay, quick side note. How is that guy getting that shot? There's no way that looks good. He's just, just, uh, just cranking it. I, uh, he's, he's gotta either be the greatest camera operator in the world or he's just getting garbage. I don't know. 
Many fans complain that the trackside cameras should not pan to track the cars as much as they do, as it makes them look slower when compared to a simple static shot. However, F1 is concerned that introducing more static angles would make the race harder to follow. Slow motion cameras. Mixed in with the trackside cameras are a few high-tech slow motion cameras that are positioned at key parts on the circuit. They are strictly used to replay footage and help the audience to see exactly what happened after the incident. F1 has used the Phantom V642 high-speed broadcast camera at races before, which can shoot up to five, 5,850 frames per second. It's amazing to watch the footage back like in uh, Alonzo's crash in Australia in 2016. Specialty cameras. In addition to all the cameras mentioned so far, there's also quite a few specialty cameras dotted around the circuit. These include several cameras embedded in the track to show the speed of the cars racing over them, five different roaming cameras to capture any pit lane drama, a handful of cameras to record crowd reactions, and even more cameras capturing pit stops like this top-down angle. Another camera to quickly mention is one on top of a scissor lift. Usually located at the end of the opening straight, F1 will send a camera operator high up on a scissor lift to capture a unique view of the cars heading down the straight and down into the first turn. In total, there can be up to 126 different cameras filming the race during one weekend. Microphones. All the elaborate camera setups would fail to capture the true power and speed of Formula One cars if it wasn't for the 147 different microphones placed around the track. The sound of the race is critical for the enjoyment of the viewer. There have actually been several studies that prove people associate the speed of a car with how loud it is. With the start of the hybrid era in 2014, many fans complained that the cars were now too quiet and were missing their signature scream. In order to combat the 11 decibel drop in volume, F1 has recently began placing microphones on cars in order to boost the sound for viewers at home. In 2018, they debuted a new type of microphone that sits underneath the car right next to the exhaust. This tiny microphone measuring less than a square inch can withstand up to 120 degrees Celsius and can accurately capture the true power of a Formula One car. Television production. While you can have as many cameras and microphones as your heart desires, you still need someone to combine all of the audio and visuals together to make a compelling TV program. For F1, that person is the television production team leader. They're essentially a conductor, editing the race together in real time. Their team takes all 126 cameras and 147 microphones and combines them together to make a seamless production all while being live on air. It's way too much for one person to keep track of. Instead, different teams make their own sub mixes, which the television production team leader then weaves together. The replays team handpicks shots of exciting moments that can be replayed when there's an appropriate time. The track mix team strictly follows the race using just the track side cameras with no added extras. It runs the entire race even when it isn't being shown. And finally, there's a team in charge of the main feed, which is what the world sees at home. It combines the track mix and replays with all the other camera options like the heli cam, onboard cameras, or pit lane angles. After seeing footage of the teams working together to combine the different angles and mixes, it's an absolute miracle how seamless the race plays on TV. Uh, oh, 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 take track, 22, 22. With you, Trey. With you, Bill. Stay on this. Stay on this. 22 with Craig. Okay, 22 one. With one. one. Track angle, please. Okay, okay RF2. Take Each RF2. team director is either shouting camera angles to cut to, finding clips to use in replays, or trying to find a cohesive story within the tangle of different narratives. The person in charge of the main feed always has to ask themselves what story they're trying to tell. If it's Hamilton versus Vettel, it's more important to stay on Vettel being upset after he crashes than to show several drivers going into the pits. F1 is always trying to show the emotion behind the race, not necessarily every little detail of what's happening. Logistics. Another thing I wanted to talk about are the insane logistics needed to broadcast the race live out to more than 50 countries. Because most tracks don't have a dedicated broadcast center, F1 transports all of the equipment needed to each race. This takes up two jumbo jets or 26 flatbed trucks. 
For example, in 2018, when Sebastian Vettel won the Singapore Grand Prix, the entire broadcast center was torn down and rebuilt in Sochi, Russia in just five days. All right, that is the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe learned something you didn't know about the filming of Formula One. That video took an enormous amount of research. I kind of got in over my head because nobody has actually ever compiled, and to my knowledge, nobody has actually compiled how they film F1 into one article or video or whatever. So hopefully this is the first. Um, if you're new here, consider subscribing. It really helps me out. Or if you've been watching for a while and you haven't yet, please do. I would, I would love you forever. Also, if you enjoyed the video, if you could leave a like and potentially a comment below what you thought of this video, was anything inaccurate that I said that should be corrected, or do you have anything else you could add to it that I might have missed? As always, you can follow me on Instagram at TommyDeWitt underscore, and I will see you guys in two weeks. I do want to show you one thing. One sec. Okay, I wanted to have this in the background, but as you can see, I have like a hundred different other photos, so it didn't work. But this is my dad's. Don't know if you can see it. It's of the Monaco Grand Prix, and I thought it was gonna be so sick, and I wore a racing t-shirt, also my dad's, but yeah, I'm sad it didn't make it in. Okay, I gotta wrap it up. I'll see you in two weeks. I'm really struggling here. I've almost been recording for an hour and a half.